This is Ann Pirate from Capital Chaos TV. I am at the Warfield in San Francisco, sitting with Tobin and Tony from Papa Roach. We are getting ready to rock and have an amazing night, but first we're going to talk about fear. We're going to talk about their lives, their music, and we're going to get into what's really going on with Papa Roach. I'm going to have them introduce themselves and tell you exactly what they do in the band. I am Tony. I play drums. I'm Tobin. I play bass. Right on, right on. So let's, right on, right on. <laughs> I love those redheads. So I want to talk about FEAR. Now I know what, it, what the acronym, acronym is, but can you explain what FEAR actually stands for, which is your newest album that was just released, was it within the last week, correct? Correct. Okay, and so what does it stand for? Face everything and rise. All right. So well, you're free to come up with your own. Oh well, yeah, there's yeah, like, there's already a list of you know. Really? Yeah. Sexual. <laughs> oh sure. <laughs> Send them in. Send Fuck everything and roll. <laughs> Fuck everything and run. <laughs> I like that one better. <laughs> <laughs> so it. Racist. Dude, yeah, that's, that, that's awesome. So you guys, I've noticed, I watch you, I've been a fan for a really, really long time. You're getting a lot of publicity. There's lots of sales. There's a lot of people talking about this new album. How are you feeling with the pressure and everything that's going on with this new album being released just this week and then being on tour? Well, um, I think uh, James Brown said it best. I feel good! <laughs> Living in America! Um, no, it, it is really a, a good feeling, a uh, good vibe overall. Like, even going into the record before we started, it was just like we were all uh, in a clear headspace, really focused. Um, the creative challenge of making that record the way we made it was, it was all good. Like, it was really fun and easy. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it just feels good. It's good. Right. It's, it's like the, the best, uh, I think the best setup that yeah. we've ever had. Mm -hmm. Like our, our label team, our management team, and just outside sources. Everybody's just on board. And it's like you totally feel the, the, the synergy she between, you know. Board. Yeah. It, like the last record, it wasn't exactly on board for a while. So yeah. it was like a struggle to finish that one. This one, it was like we were just all you know cohesive focus together and uh, it's very positive good and I can tell by listening to it and seeing the feedback from people and I understand that this was your first time since 2006 not recording in Sacramento and that when you guys went in to do it that you had little to no material yet busted something out in two to three months yeah. so like that. how did that happen were you guys just like locked in a room putting your ideas together or did you yes. kind of have an idea of okay this is what's gonna happen um, a little bit of both, but I mean, really, it was just like capturing locked in, locked in a studio, yeah, <laughs> locked in little rooms, and just forced to be like, you know, creative on the spot. Which I, I was into it. I thought it was a, like I said, a creative challenge. It was really fun and exciting for me. I love being in the studio. Um, Tony, how much do you like being in the studio? Hurry up and wait. I like, yeah, I like being in the studio. <laughs> it's the motto I, of my life. I actually did the drums last, which was pretty unique, mm -hmm. uh, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I got to sit back and listen to everything and, you know, with vocals, which is unheard of because we always do music first. And there's also a great, um, like, old, like, Italian, oh. like, old school, like, mob diner, restaurant, yeah. whatever you want, like, yeah. dark lit, yeah, next door with, like, great bar and... So that's where I was for two months. <laughs> uh, next yeah. door. No, next no. door. <laughs> Eating inside. Yeah. No, it, it was um, it was really fun for me. It, Jacoby was like really uh, nervous at the beginning because he was like, "How are we gonna do this?" How, you know, I think he was felt the pressure at first. But once we got through a couple songs, and we listened back to what we did, like the first two tracks, "Broken Is Me," and I can't remember what the second one was. We were just like, "All we gotta do is all we gotta do is like repeat this ten more times, and we got a record. We're good." Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. All right. So I know that Jacoby does the writing and a lot of his stuff comes from a very personal place. Like my very favorite song is Before I Die, which I understand has to do with some of the relationship that he has with his wife. So on this new album, is there any songs that you both just really, really relate to or that are your absolute favorite to play or just to be involved in? Uh, absolute favorite to play. I mean, 
we're kind of getting into the new stuff right now. We yeah. haven't really launched into a lot of lot. We we play like two or three new ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as relating to some, I mean, there's some intense stuff, like really just out there. He's you know he's putting it all out there, and mm-hmm. even his wife was like, uh, "Are you sure that's so?" <laughs> you know, she's like, uh, uh, "Like the song Gravity is is." Yes. obviously one of those were you know male female perspective and, and um i don't really relate to that one <laughs> i mean that's his thing you know that's yeah. what he went through so um yeah I don't, I don't know lyrically i haven't really i'm not really falling apart <laughs> uh not yet. i'm trying to i'm trying to face things and rise i guess that's that's probably like the you know see yeah. it's like Tony and Jerry are like the most like even keel together, like chill dudes you'll ever meet. Uh-huh. And to best to describe the band, like Jacoby and I are the exact opposites, but we're just <laughs> always a tornado of drama and trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So I want to talk about the fact that he is sober openly. I also am on the wagon. I think it's awesome and inspiring. So how do you guys help him or or what is your support system with him being on tour? And do you ever have to kind of check people who want to pressure him or get him to do things that he doesn't want to do? First of all, we start by drinking all of what's on the bus. So so he doesn't get to it. Uh, That's my personal uh, nightly, no. No, it's, you know, I mean, we don't really, at first when he was going through it, it was kind of like, well, should we, and we were hiding stuff, but he was finding it. So he wasn't really fully committed yet. Mm -hmm. And now that he's fully committed, he's like, do what you do. Like, you know, there's no problem. It's not like we feel uncomfortable um, in front of him, you know, drinking or whatever. Um, You know, so that, that kind of makes it easy and I never wanted to really like flaunt it in front of him anyway so I always felt kind of weird at first but he was like dude don't worry about it it's yeah. my thing I'm going through it like I'm not gonna you know take this bottle and which he did for a while like it was he you know would sneak stuff but yeah. we're like dude if you're gonna drink you're a grown-ass man yeah. just just drink with us if you're gonna drink but you know that's another that's another story he can't just have a cocktail you know yeah, he's a what do we say he's a He's a he's a sprinter, not a. Yeah. He just and then he's like, all right, yeah. so um. No, but it's been it's been great because of what he went through on the connection. He was kind of a mess, you know, and uh, he would ride his bike around. I'm just going to look for that lyric, you know. We're like, he'd come back hours later, like, dude, where you been? You all right? Like, so. But this record was way better. Like, just he was so focused and just like so sober and and into it and as soon as it started the lyrics started coming out he was just like he was just feeling it you know and, and just the positivity was just like undeniable you know i mean people can hear that on the record you know and uh that's the way he's living his life now and it's 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 pretty amazing it's pretty remarkable you know because i've never personally had a problem with you know partying i mean well i mean i'm sure other people think i have a problem <laughs> No, it's not. I can not. I can go home. Yeah, I can go home and not drink. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm a social drinker, so it's like when I'm around my friends and it's easier. Mm-hmm. But so I, I can't relate to it that way. But he's just doing a, an amazing job. I mean, it's it's also him taking care of his voice too. You know, yeah. and it's it shows, man. He's belting shit out every night, and it's it's strong. I think it also speaks highly to your guys' connection that you're able to party, you're able to work together, and you support him in whatever decision that he does. And that's true brotherhood. It, there shouldn't Drinking should not ever be a factor in whether or not you're going to love somebody. You're going to no, accept no. them for whoever and whatever they are. No. So I, I think that's really amazing how you guys are, are able to come together and it's actually strengthened your bond and your music because now he's more focused. Yeah. You guys know exactly what to expect and you're just like fucking going yeah. for it. So, and yeah. To touch on what you said about like people like, you know, forcing him or anything. There's nobody... Nobody really, yeah. Nobody really comes around like, let me get you a drink, and there's no, there's none of that douchebagness. Like, it's like everybody respects, 
you know what he's doing and, and his path now so it's, it's it's cool that's rad all right so do you guys consider yourself to be a sacramento slash vacaville band is that where you came from like if somebody so so how often do you go back there um and when you go there are you able to enjoy yourself or is it like paparazzi central where you kind of have to you know how are you able to enjoy your hometown 